Hi, I'm Kalila Reynolds, and welcome to another episode of JN Talking Wealth, brought to you in partnership with the JN Group. Now, if you're interested in achieving financial freedom and building generational wealth, then guess what? This is the program for you. Make sure you watch to the end and stay with us. The JN Financial Group has introduced a new game-changing platform that will make accessing and navigating financial services ultra convenient and way faster. It's called the One JN Passport. But what is it and what makes it so game-changing? How do you even use it? On this episode of JN Talking Wealth, we'll learn all about the One JN Passport and why you should get it today. Our guest is going to be 1JN Program Director Claudine Allen, Member Relations Executive at the Jamaica National Group. So stick around. But before we talk with her, pay attention to this week's Spotlight Question. Hi, Claudine. Welcome to JN Talking Wealth. Hi, Kalila. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so pleased to be here. So tell me all about the 1JN Passport. Why that name and what does it do? The 1JN Passport is simply our Jamaica National Identity that mm. passports you across the JN Financial Group. And that's why it's named that way. <laughs> um, it is a customer information management service provided by Jamaica National. And we've developed this tool to help members access financial services in a, in, a, in a far less bothersome way. So it removes the common hassle, the customer friction that people have faced over the years, this, this demand that we people in the financial services have to ask people for documentation over and over, mm -hmm. over again. Mm -hmm. The passport takes away all of that in that you provide it once to the JN Group. And after you do that, you never have to provide it again as long as it is current. So it's your passport to join companies. That just makes so much sense. It Absolutely. just seems so logical. Yeah. So before the passport, you had to submit documents multiple times to different branches? Whenever you do business with Jamaica National, having established a relationship with one entity because of the rules that govern each entity, you find yourself having to resubmit. Mm -hmm. So even if it's a day after opening an account at Jane Bank, if you walk into Jane Fund Managers, pretty much all of the information you provided to Jane Bank, you'll have to provide it again to Jane Fund Managers. And what the password does, it, it takes that away. Once you're onboarded and we do our due diligence in the back end, we, we certify you, we give you your Jane identity. And this Jane identity gets you into companies across the Jane Financial. Ah, so it's not just a passport for the customer. It's also a passport to, uh, that allows the different businesses to communicate with each other. Absolutely, because at the heart of it is customer information management, right? So you, you, you tell us how you want us to interact with you and how we, you want us to process your data, meaning if you want us to share it with different entities or not. And you are able to change that consent as your business grows with Jamaica National. So that was something that was key for us in designing the service, putting the power of, of, of how to in, engage in the hands of the consumer. Um, and we have maintained that also to comply with the requirements for the Data Protection Act mm -hmm. and the expectations of our regulation. Yes. So it, it is groundbreaking in its approach to managing customer information and what it empowers our members to do at their own leisure. How was that getting into compliance with the Data Protection Act? Because I know it's an extensive piece of legislation, a lot of requirements. Uh, I would imagine that having the passport makes it easier though. Absolutely. Now, Jamaica National has an advantage where data protection is concerned because we operate in jurisdictions which have had those regulations for years. Mm. So we do extensive business in the UK. So we were always accustomed to accommodating GDPR requirements. And remember, GDPR is not only applicable in the UK. If you are a UK resident and you are doing business in Jamaica, we have an obligation to treat your data 
in compliance with those laws there in the UK. Mm -hmm. So our business was already on its way to compliance with what we anticipated Jamaica would do um, with respect to the development of our own regulation. But ultimately for us, everything goes right back to offering our members the ability to choose. You're making a great decision to become a part of the Jane family in the first place. Mm -hmm. But when you do, you're also now empowered to say how you want us to treat mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And so once you, you establish that onboarding relationship at the start, we almost, we, we curate the rest of the transactions that you're about to do. So you will find, for instance, that if you have onboarded and I have onboarded, Depending on what we tell the passport service about ourselves, the questions that are asked of us to acquire loans or, or open accounts might be different mm -hmm. because it's based on your circumstance right. and what you had already pr provided in the onboarded service. So process. it might just be one or two additional questions. There you go. For the new service. There you go. So are all the brands under JN? now integrated under the passport? So we've started with a phased introduction. And of course, we're starting with bank. So you onboard and you are able to acquire products at the bank level in the app itself. So the passport service is delivered by app and website. And you can use the app to apply for new accounts and unsecured loans. But you can also show your passport at Jane Fund Managers, Jane GI, Jane Life, and it would show to them that you've already done a particular minimum level of due diligence and that makes the subsequent business easier. Is it a physical document, like a pa passport? You show it on your phone. Oh, oh so you a digital passport. Yes, yes. So you just show the app on your phone and in the back end we can verify and all of that and we get you through your business much easier than for somebody who doesn't have this service. So you said this is digital, it's on your phone. A lot of Jamaicans are still afraid of tech. Yes. How do you get over that? You know, that is a very steep curve, but we've been climbing it slowly but surely. For us, we are heavily regulated. And so we would have built the solution in a particular way to comply with the expectations of the Bank of Jamaica. And they have approved the service, by the way, approved it several years ago. And we've been working with them on the process design. We also have certain expectations of cybersecurity based on the type of business we're in and the jurisdictions that we operate in. So our systems are sound where that is concerned. But there's another part of security, you know, that we we don't talk about as much. And that is a responsibility of the person to lock their phones, log out of mm -hmm. apps when they use it and all of that. So there is it's shared security. Create strong passwords. Cre create strong passwords. In fact, we encourage people to create passphrases, mm -hmm. right? Something that is empowering and something that you will remember. Mm -hmm. And you, every time you log in, you type your phrase and you get in. And when you're through, you hit that logout button, not just the close, right? Because you could have configured your device in a way that might leave you vulnerable to somebody who either just picks up your phone, gets in when you're sleeping, you know, the face recognition and everything is open. So you develop the habit of logging out. But where the, the, the banks, uh, the group's process is concerned, we are heavily scrutinized and audited and all of that so on our side we know that we are right and tight right and we pray and hope and work with our members to also protect themselves mm -hmm. so from time to time you notice campaigns on social media reminding people what to do how to stay safe not only online with a passport for instance but also at the atms and things like that now a lot of people who don't like the tech it's really not that they don't like it, you know, it's that they're, they don't know it. Mm -hmm. They're afraid because they don't know. So they're afraid of the unknown. Mm -hmm. So how do you help people adapt to this new technology, your customers and potential customers? So we're doing two things. One, we started when we launched a passport, we started by using it in Jane Bank branches. So when you walk into the Jane Bank branch, our team members will either offer you a device or say to you, let us use a passport on your device. And they literally sit beside you and show you how it works. That has been awesome for us because it has helped us to understand some of the user issues that we would not have anticipated because we are already 
very smartphone friendly. And many of our members aren't so friendly, so there are some navigation issues that they might come upon. So that helps us. But also we're developing content that we're going to post on social media, things that we play in the branches, things that we push our members to through direct emails and things like that so that they can play around with it and learn about the app itself as well. Okay, so I have my phone. I'm ready to create my profile. Mm -hmm. What do I need? All you need is your ID and TRN. Okay. Yeah, and you have the phone, which is a requirement already. So you start by signing up. You enter your full name as it appears on the ID, your TRN, your uh, phone number, email address. And what we do when we receive that information in the back end while you are navigating to the next screen, we are verifying it. So we mm. immediately send an email to the address you provided a text message to the phone number you provided to make sure that once you're in, the information is accurate. And when that, that um, automated message comes in, we now ask you to provide it back to us as a way of, you know, verifying the information right. you provided. And then we say to you, you know, we want to make sure that the person who is presenting an ID to us is the human being who is using the phone. Mm -hmm. So we ask you to take a selfie. Okay. Which is really a liveliness check, right? So we might ask you to turn your head or to smile or something of the sort, um, depending on the day. And once you've taken that selfie, our intelligent processes now are matching it, verifying the information that you provided with the, the, the ID, making sure that the two faces are the same, checking other databases that we are required to check for due the standard due diligence, and then we allow you to advance if you are in compliance. So you're asking for some sensitive information, TRN, um, ID, you want to take my likeness, an image of my likeness. Mm -hmm. How secure is this information on the app? So the information doesn't remain on the app. It goes into our systems and it's the same information you would have provided to us if you walked into the branch, right? So we, we ensure that our processes meet the standard requirements for ISO certification, for cybersecurity tests, and most importantly, the expectations of our regulations. Now, this app has been years in development, and the journey has been very interesting. We have gone to the BOJ, sat down, we've shown them the architecture, um, and they have approved it. So we, we know we're meeting industry standards. But I remind again, like any, any app you're using, even if you were to use, say, the common social media platforms like Instagram and Facebook, when you are through, log out. Mm -hmm. Never share your password. Do not write it down somewhere where somebody can pick it up. Don't save it on the phone. <laughs> uh, make sure that it is a phrase that you will remember. And every time you're going to use it, you log out, you log in and develop that habit. That will help keep you safe as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So this product now, I think we kind of skipped over a step. It is an app. So the first thing is you download the app yes. from the app store. Yes. And then you do all the other procedures that you mentioned. Can I check my bank accounts using the app? So I'm glad you asked me that question. The One Jane Passport is not a banking app. Uh -huh. It is a customer information management service, which is more aligned with customer service and product application information sharing. So to see your banking transactions, you would still go to janebank.com and you log into Jane Light, which is a banking platform. The, the passport service is offered through an app, which is the most readily available option. But you can also go to our website. You can type in www.onegenpassport.com and the same service will come up and you can use your desktop or your laptop or your tablet to access it as well. Because there's some or your people, phone. Or your phone, yeah. There are some people who prefer not to download an app on the device. Okay. And so they maintain their presence via a So website. you don't have to use the app? You don't have to use an app. No. Oh. It's a digital channel that gives you the power to decide how you interact with Jamaica National. Okay. So it's not something that you would use on a day-to-day -day basis then. It's just 
the passport that takes you when you are in the application process or when you need to update your information with one of the JN companies. That's correct. So it is an onboarding service that you can do in preparation for accessing other services. So for instance, let's say you're planning to take a mortgage in the coming months. Start with your onboarding because you would have already created that relationship with Jamaica National. And when you get to talk to your sales representative about the mortgage, your information is already in the system. Similarly, if you're going to invest with Jane Fund Managers, which is always a great decision, by the way. I'm sure. <laughs> Start with the passport, get your information in. So by the time you get in to sit with your financial advisor, the process has already started. Mm -hmm. You're halfway there. And you don't have to be finding all these things all over the place. Oh, I forgot this document. That's you already correct. uploaded it. <laughs> yeah, it's already Perfect. there. And you know, one of the things I admire most about the app is that I don't need to onboard in one sitting either, you know. I can start the process and when I have the time, I go back and I enrich the data that is there by providing additional information, even if I'm not applying for a product right then and there. So it's a great way to prepare to access banking services. Um, and this is important. There's something we take for granted about financial services. The truth is there are many Jamaicans who are intimidated by the thought of going into a banking hall mm. or an investment house to, to become a part of the formal mm. financial service system, many Jamaicans. And what the passport service has done is that it has created an opportunity for you to do that in an environment that is familiar and comfortable to you. It also allows you to start so that you can anticipate what you're going to need you get going on the journey so you don't go into a, a, a retail space and then you're told come back with x or y mm -hmm. you can just go home and do it mm -hmm. and, and that's an advantage makes sense make life easy i'm all about that so where can we find more information you can go to onejnpassport.com and the website will give you all the information about the features of the service, where you can download the app. So it has a link. It could take you to the Apple Store or the, the Android Store, the Google Play Store, where you can download it. And it tells you what you will need to start. and just gives you some good advice as well as what other people say about it. Mm. Or if you don't want to do any downloads, just go for the sign up button, which is somewhere in the top right and corner of that website. And you can sign up from right there. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for telling us all about the JN, the one JN passport. Claudine, it's great having you. Thank you, Kalila. It was wonderful to be here. So guys, remember you can download the app One JN Passport. That's three words in the Google Play Store for Android and in the App Store for your Apple devices. Now, if you don't want to download the app, all you have to do is go to onejnpassport.com and try the mobile site or just visit the website for some more information. That's all the time that we have for this episode of JN Talking Wealth. Remember to like this video, subscribe to this channel and share with a friend. Also follow JN Bank on all their socials. I'm Kalila Reynolds, until next time.